welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. We're going to be doing a bit of uncrating today. So uh, we got a surprise package in here, semi from Mex uh, something or another via China. So let's go ahead and crack this crate open. This was tough getting it out of that Chinese made crate. Uh, be careful with the nails and that's very sharp. Uh, however, what we have here is a small desktop pneumatic press. So picked it up off of eBay for about um, 180 bucks. There's a couple versions out there and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, with, with this one, this is a 200 kilogram, I think about 440 pounds at 140 PSI, which is sort of a little bit, I think, uh, overstated because most air compressors uh, or at least, um, you know, prosumer or consumer air compressors only go up to about 120 pounds. Uh, so I doubt we'll see about, we'll see that much out of it. Uh, however, I think this is going to be interesting for a couple different projects. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there's a couple different versions. There's another version out there that sells for about 250 to 300 bucks uh, that has a Chinese control panel here and you can set it for you know the number of strokes and it counts and it must have an Arduino inside kind of a waste of money if you ask me because again the only thing this thing does is go up and down so with this one uh, basically you energize it you push the button the plunger goes down and that's about it so uh, on the side here it's got a solenoid valve assembly kind of hokily put in here from China so I'll probably change this around, and so you can kind of, kind of see here um, the air inlets down here. Now this this controls energizing it or de-energizing it. I'm going to change this, put an air compressor coupler. Uh, it also has an air pressure meter. One of the things I'm going to do is replace this with a digital meter, and this is your regulator to control um, how much air goes through. Now this apparently bolts to the side here like that. So it makes it nice and the air comes out of here, feeds into the solenoid. The solenoid engages, pressurizes the cylinder, which drives the piston down. It's got this handy dandy little adjustment here um, to, to ratchet it up and down. You, I'm assuming loosen these bolts over here on this side and you can use this for quote unquote fine tune adjusting. Uh, also has a T-slot down here on the table so you can mount a vise or other um, holding mechanism to it. And uh, it's not too heavy, I'd say sub 50 pounds. Has a lot of Chinese writing on it, uh, plastic top, but mostly metal. Looks like they've used some sort of you know drill press type stand. So it, I think it's kind of interesting. I think it's got a 16 millimeter um, opening. And again, you put whatever die you want in here, and then obviously it presses it down. A lot of guys were getting these for fidget spinners, pressing the bearings into it. Uh, and I noticed a lot of similar uh, units like this being used for soap making, uh, I guess bath bombs. I can think of a bunch of different uses for it. I've got a couple uses for this plant. Um, I'm, I, I'm basically 100% sure it doesn't have enough power to even stamp light metal. You might be able to do, uh, you know, fabrics, cardboard, uh, maybe some leather with it, with a sharp enough die. But outside of that, I think you're going to have a tough time doing anything other than that. More so, I think it would be pressing stuff together versus pressing stuff out of another material. So I'm going to do a couple of different uh, videos on this. I wanted to get an unboxing done so you guys could see what it's like. I'll have links to this down below, and I'll also set up a resource page for this. Uh, because one of the things that, since I, I know I can translate the input pressure to an output pressure, I can do a couple different things with this that I think will be unique. And again, I'm going to change this out for a uh, digital gauge so I can get a finer control of my air coming in so I know what the pressure is. The other thing I'm going to do is put a scale down here because again, this max is out on a curve at about 440 pounds. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll test it is, is, you know, do the pressure here, check what output pressure I have here, and then kind of come up with a mapping. The other thing I will probably do eventually is also, um, uh, you know, maybe put some strain sensors down here uh, for some different feedback mechanisms back up here. I'm really curious to see the quality of how this, this solenoid works. Uh, you know, if it's variable, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, in other words, is it just click on, click off? Uh, there seems to be some adjustments here. A lot, a lot of stuff you need to go through. Now, this say AC 110 volts. It does have one uh, 110 volt cord. So I'm assuming this is a fairly good size solenoid. You can see the air release is down here, uh, and it has some kind of control here. Uh, not too much on the instructions. So I'm going to have to go through and fiddle with this a little bit. Also up here it says, you know, no wrenches, so I'm not sure what this is. I think this is probably going to control the throw uh, of the piston. So this is a pretty big, um, you know, nut up here. And so I'm assuming that this is the piston and the other end of it. And so probably use this to control that. Um, so anyways, uh, I found this interesting. And again, one of the things I, I'm trying to do in, on this channel is really um, demonstrate how you can build you know a home shop and not only for hobbyist purposes but for manufacturing and one of the things in the home manufacturing that's yeah i think is important is being able to press things together so again i know it's a lame example but using the fidget spinner being able to press the bearings in or the nuts in um, and you know you can make it so you could press all four in at once with this and at 400 and some pounds i think that would be plenty of power to do that uh, also, if you're, you're manufacturing something where it needs a press fit, you know, a light press fit, I think this is another good solution. So, uh, again, when I ran across this, I was uh, rather surprised I hadn't seen these before. And a uh, long, long time ago, I had something similar to this, um, actually with my grandfather, that we used for making fish, fishing lures, pressing fishing lures. So, it might have enough force for that, again, if we get up to around 140 PSI in the air compressor. Uh, but I'll also do a video on connecting this all up to air and how it works and uh, also building dies for it. So uh, I'm, I'll probably use the mini lathe and the CNC to, to make dies for embossing and other testing purposes. So hopefully you'll find this interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. It's either going to be that way or that way. And the swag shop's going to be up in the corner. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we hook this thing up and we start pressing away. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.